Mr. President, I strongly share your view expressed at September's UN General Assembly that uh, genuine freedom is having the opportunity to live life to the fullest with dignity. But genuine freedom can only be delivered through genuine democracy. Adam Smith argued that laws and institutions that protect the liberty of individuals to accomplish their full potential result uh, in greater prosperity for society at large. In Greece, we have learned that the hard way, the economic meltdown that gripped my country for much of the last decade threatened the very fabric of Greek society and weakened our institutions. Not anymore. In 2019, Greeks rejected a dogma in favor of democratic resilience and reform based on strong legal frameworks and independent and representative institutions. And in the four years since, my government has prioritized the digitization of the state, waged war and corruption, and passed hundreds of laws modernizing my country. Our success does not lie in a top-down administrative process, but in the ownership of these important reforms by well-informed, socially-minded, and engaged citizens who flourish in an open, tolerant, free, pluralistic, and democratic society. At the same time, government accountability and transparency, a free press and equal access for all to a fair and impartial justice system is pivotal to delivering social justice and an inclusive, equitable growth. And today, I am proud, Mr. Chairman, to report that Greece is one of only three countries in Europe to have incorporated the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals into our annual planning. And we continue and will continue to pursue reforms around digital transition and e-governance too, driving the so important direct participation across civil society, but also enfranchising young and old alike. But digital isn't just a great enabler of economic growth. It is a great enabler of democratization itself. Digital innovation, tech, and now artificial intelligence are helping policymakers offer global solutions to complex geopolitical issues, from the fight against climate change to the preservation of biodiverse habitats, from green energy provision to the understanding and management of the drivers of mass migration. But closer to home, digital reform is reducing red tape and administrative costs for businesses, delivering a fairer and less cumbersome tax system, and opening up access for all to digital services. We know that in countries devoid of transparency, accountability, and representation with poor track records on human rights uh, and the rule of law, limited civil society participation, uh, and few, if any, strong independent institutions, the pursuit of political agendas over economic growth and prosperity is uh, preventing citizens from achieving their full potential. And today, the threat to our democratic way of life is perhaps more acute than at any time in the last three decades. That is why we must never waver in the promotion of political, civil, and economic rights by bolstering democratic institutions and the rule of law, championing accountability, challenging corruption, and fighting for inclusivity. And by promoting economic development and prosperity, we are not only strengthening the foundations of democracy as a bulwark against those who threaten us, but also as an incubator for those who wish to join us, for those who wish every citizen to live life to the fullest with dignity. Thank you very much.